Hello and welcome to our Sunday worship on this, the second Sunday in the season of Easter. My name is Elizabeth Harris and I'm one of the ministers in the Falmouth and Gwenap Methodist circuit. And I'm here today in St Day Chapel and friends from St Day will help us in our worship. A word of prayer as we begin. Lord, we praise you, the risen Christ, as we move from Lent into the season of Easter. Be with us, help us to proclaim that Jesus has risen from the dead. Bless us in our worship this morning, we pray. Amen. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you. 
here in St. Day Chapel, as in many chapels. On Easter Day, we decorated the cross, not this one, but the one that's outside of the building. We decorated it with fresh flowers, part of our witness for the community, part of telling that new life is here, part of telling that Jesus is no longer dead, but is alive. He has risen. It's a tradition that many chapels use as they speak the gospel to their community. You may have one at your own chapel. You may have put some flowers on it. You may have gone to Gwenap Pitts to put some flowers all there. It's a good way to speak of the good news of the new life available in Jesus Christ. On Easter morning, we also here had a lovely breakfast together. And in our Tuesday group this week, we spoke of the work of God at the cross. And we shared together with some arts and crafts, making things that would remind us of that. So we're going to have a look at some of those images now. bring our prayers to God. Let's pray. God of all time, of past and present and future, we offer you our praise. You are almighty God and we honour your name. We give you thanks for your daily presence and companionship and for the transformation you bring into our lives. We confess that we frequently sin against you in thoughts and word and deed. And we sin against our neighbours, not loving them as we should. But we know your nature is to show love and mercy and on that we depend. So we receive your forgiveness in and through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Teach us to follow you to serve each other in your name and to demonstrate the wonders of your transformational love. We pray in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Let's share together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Gospel reading, John 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are, forgi they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples 
disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, I put my fingers in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the door was shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Do you know, we don't really know a lot about the disciple called Thomas. We know that his name was Thomas, Thomas Didymus. Both of those words mean twin. So I think it's uh, pretty safe to assume that he was a twin. And tradition tells us that after the events recorded in the Gospels, the disciple called Thomas travelled to India and lived out his days there preaching the Gospel to many people. There's a rich tradition in India and many churches named St Thomas after the disciple Thomas. He lived there and he died there. He was martyred in his ministry. Those things are not recorded in the Gospels, but there is a deep tradition about it. So we have no reason to particularly doubt it, though no doubt some of the stories have been embellished a bit. We do know from the Gospels that he was one of the twelve and he was a man of courage and a man of faith. Earlier in John's Gospel, we heard him say to Jesus, he said, let us also go that we might die with him. Brave words when Jesus was explaining to his disciples that he was going towards Jerusalem to his certain death. Thomas was willing to go too. But now in this account that we've read today, Jesus has been executed, he's been buried, and now there's rumours of resurrection, new life. And Thomas finds out that Jesus has appeared to the other disciples who were together in a locked room, but he was missing. We don't know where he was, he was out. And he missed the events and he says, I don't believe it unless I see him with my own eyes, unless I touch his wounds, feel the scars, I'm not going to believe it. I wonder if he was looking after himself, an act of self-preservation. We call him Doubting Thomas, don't we? I always think that's a bit unfair. I think his doubt was perfectly reasonable, actually. Most of us don't believe something without some kind of evidence, some kind of proof. I admire Thomas for speaking out how he felt. I won't believe it unless I see it for myself. I want a first-hand experience. I don't just want to listen to what you say. I want to know for my very self. And about a week later, he finds out for himself when the same scenario happens again. The disciples are together. Jesus appears and says to Thomas, come, feel the scars in my hand. Put your finger here. Put your hand in the wound on my side. Thomas doesn't need to. He just sees and acknowledges the risen Christ. My Lord and my God, he says. <laughs> so what about our own faith, our own belief? 2,000 years later, here in the 21st century, we're a long way away from that opportunity to see the risen Jesus in the flesh, in his body, raised from the dead. We have no choice but to believe by
by faith because we can't see Jesus in that same way. We're called to salvation by faith alone. We can't see Jesus Christ physically. So how do we develop that real relationship with him, with God? Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us this. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. I love that. Let me read it again. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We are people of faith. We are people of Easter, people of the risen Christ. And we're called to grow in our discipleship. That's how we nurture our relationship with him. Through prayer, through worship, through learning, through growing together, becoming more and more like Jesus, filled with his spirit, the comforter which he gave to us. Jesus said in that passage, didn't he? He said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's me. I hope that's you. And if you've not come to faith yet, then let me tell you, you are invited. Jesus calls you by name, calls you to trust him, to grow in him, to believe in him and to have faith, to know the new life that the resurrection of Jesus Christ brings. God lavishes us with his love. And we grow together. We're not perfect. That's discipleship alongside each other. God is with us in that journey, in that experience, even when, like Thomas, we have questions and doubts. They are perfectly reasonable and perhaps a part of our discipleship. To doubt, to question, to ask for more of God in our lives. Until we see Jesus face to face, we will have those questions and doubts. Until we see him, we will live by faith. And yet our relationship, it is real, it is personal. We are disciples. We're invited to come to him, even though we question it, as Charles Wesley did. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should die? For me these are big questions but they encourage us to come and ask when we look at our world hurting and broken as it is when we pray for ukraine when we pray for other areas when we pray for people who suffer and struggle and are displaced and know bereavement and death and pain and illness we see that our work our world is not perfect and yet Jesus calls us to life. Yet Jesus offers us his peace and you and I, disciples called by faith, living life by faith, are called to share that good news in our world. May we, with Thomas, proclaim my Lord and my God. And may we share that, that really good news, that Easter resurrection news with those around us. Amen.
today. As we continue to grow in faith and discipleship, may we believe in the risen Christ and proclaim his love to each other. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son and Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen.